Shalom Aleichem, welcome to my channel. I sang that song once at work and a friend of mine said to me, oh, that, that, that song, I know that song, it, that's the Holocaust song. So I said to her, Holocaust song? Uh, no, it's not a Holocaust song actually. It's a song that Jews in Europe love to sing and it was one of the most famous tunes of pre-Holocaust. Really in the Holocaust, not only did we lose six million people, but we also lost a life and a culture and institutions that existed before the Holocaust and Yiddish played a huge role in those. So I would love to talk about Yiddish and the history of Yiddish and what Yiddish is and what happened to Yiddish today. And of course, we're gonna talk about expressions and words that we all love to use in Yiddish. So on one hand, Yiddish is a sad reminder to a world that was and a world that was abruptly destroyed and destructed. But at the same time, it was a very important part of our culture that helped us survive all those years and it was full of humor and life and so much we can learn from it. To quote Erica Jong, an American author, Yiddish wasn't just words, you see. It was an attitude. It was sweet and sour. It was a shrug and a kiss. It was humility and defiance all in one. So Yiddish really is an attitude and a way of life and it kept us through some really, really difficult times and helped us survive. So let's go back and start at the beginning. May this video be in loving memory of my four grandparents who were all Yiddish speakers and I miss them so much. Okay, so what is Yiddish? Now, Jews over the years had several languages. We always had Hebrew, the language of the Bible, and we had Aramaic that goes with it that was more our spoken language. We spoke it in Babylonian when we were in exile there. We studied the Talmud in Aramaic, so Hebrew and Aramaic. As we exiled to different places, we formed hybrid languages, sort of a mix with the native language together with our Hebrew and Aramaic that we knew. And some of these are no longer existent. There's Judeo-French and different languages. One well, pretty well known is Ladino, which is the Sephardic version of Yiddish. It's a mix of Spanish and Hebrew and Aramaic. In the 9th and 10th century, as we continue to go to the Germanic er areas of the Rhine, we started speaking medieval German and we formed a unique language that combined Hebrew and Aramaic together with the German spoken at the time. So it's about 65% German and 20% Hebrew and Aramaic and also some Latin uh, entered it. So it's like a mixture of language and it was the language that we spoke to each other in. So to the Germans next to us, we were speaking in, in German. Of course, we continue to teach our children to pray and to study Torah in Hebrew. And this was the language that we spoke to each other on everyday matters and life. In the following centuries, we were deported a lot of times from the areas of Western Europe and we located more in Poland and Ukraine and that area. And then we started speaking Polish and different language, but Yiddish remained mostly Germanic. A few Slavic words did enter uh, the repertoire as we continued living there. And this language was our main language of the Ashkenazi Jews living in Europe uh, for all of these years. There were differences between Western and Eastern Yiddish, but we basically were able to understand each other. Um, if a Jew from Eastern Europe met someone from Western Europe, they would be able to speak Yiddish and to understand it. Before the war, it was estimated that there was about 12 million Yiddish speakers. And of course the war, um, six million Jews were murdered and the Yiddish speak and they, these people that were murdered were Yiddish speakers. So unfortunately the language has declined. Today we do have some people still speaking it mainly in ultra-Orthodox communities, um, especially Hasidic. Uh, my mom just told me if you want to learn Yiddish you should watch Shtisel. So Shtisel is like a revival. People are loving the show and loving the Yiddish and maybe I'll get a chance to watch that show.
Nee, nee, nicht, nicht Schulem Aleichem. Nur wie mir ruft ihm. Erschein im Sefer, wo es reißt die Arzt. Ah, und das ist äh, Mendele. Nee, nee, echt nicht Mendele. Äh, 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 nun. No. Tschatschkes? Idisch, sag ich dir. Der Beulischer. Wie hat er noch geheißen? Baschewis. Baschewis. Basically, after the war, we emigrated to United States and to Israel, and Yiddish declined in these places. My grandparents and great parents, when they moved to America, they were all Yiddish speakers, and this was, um, you know, the language of immigrants. They spoke to each other, but their kids learned English and American society. Um, you know, they became very well integrated in the American society, so English did become the main language. Of course, Yiddish expressions are still very, very common to hear. And in Israel, on the other hand, Hebrew became uh, the main language. Yiddish at the time was considered maybe like the old Jew spoke Yiddish and we want to embrace Hebrew. So Yiddish also in Israel declined, except these communities, Hasidic, ultra-Orthodox communities. It's estimated around 1 million Yiddish speakers exist today in the world. The golden age of Yiddish was in the early 20th century. There were books and theaters and literature published. Uh, really well-known people are Shalom Aleichem with the famous Filler on the Roof that later became a huge Broadway success and Yud Lamid Peretz and Menachem Mendel Sfarim, they all um, really contributed to the Yiddish theater and the Yiddish culture. Basically, to summarize, while Yiddish is a very sad reminder of a world that just no longer exists and Yiddish speakers were wiped out off the face of the earth, it's still a reminder of our rich Jewish culture, our humor, and everything that helped us survive uh, some of those very rough years and till today we are still here we are still speaking Yiddish thanks for being here hope to see you next time and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up see you next time In the next episode, next week, we'll talk about some of my favorite expressions and words that we use all the time in our family in Yiddish. My husband from Hungary and me from my Polish roots and coming from America. We love to bring in all these words and expressions from Yiddish that I'd love to share with you in the next episode. Zai gesund and I will see you guys in the next episode.